Somebody said amen. The glory of God is here, and we're going to talk about why you feel the presence of God. And it's not just about this service. This is going to be something you carry with you. Say, I'm carrying it home. Say, I'm carrying it home. Amen. It's going to be in my house. It's going to be every part, be every part of my life this week. Amen. We've been studying the book of Ephesians on Thursday nights, and wow, the glory of God has fell in unprecedented proportions on our home. Uh, I was going to preach a little bit about it last Sunday, but the Holy Spirit said, no, pray, have the people pray for each other. So that's why we did what we did last week. But I'm just going to go over this quickly, and this is a, 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 a three or four minute go over of what we've talked about the last couple of weeks on Thursday nights about our true identity in Christ. Amen. Amen. Right. And if you hear something that really strikes home with you, you better shout, you better repeat after me or whatever you want. Just get it in your spirit. Amen. Say, we are called saints. Amen. Holy, sanctified people. We have grace and peace. A powerful, life-changing, prophetic blessing is on us. Say, it's on me. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms and our true existence. Amen. We are already in his favor. Somebody said amen. Amen. Say, we are chosen in him. We are declared holy and blameless. We are adoption to sonship. That's what we got, guys. Come on. We have complete redemption through his blood. We have forgiveness of sin, wisdom, and understanding of the great mystery, which is the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. We have been given the spirit of unity, amen, on earth the same as it is in heaven. Do you believe that? Yeah. See, if you do, it's going to start flowing out of you like you've never experienced in your life. Say, I'm predestined in him, amen. It was not an afterthought. It was planned in him before the creation of the world. I am accepted in Christ, amen. I have been given the Holy Spirit as a seal. Say, I am sealed. We have a guaranteed inheritance in Christ. Everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to me because I'm a co-inheritor with him. Amen. We have been given the awesome gift of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The eyes of my heart have been enlightened. Come on, you need to confess this. Amen. Hallelujah. We have been given resurrection power. Amen. We have been placed above all demonic principality. Amen. Say everything about the devil is under my feet. Come on, everybody say it's on. You need to Stand up right now, get out of your comfort zone, and say, the devil's under my feet. Come on. The glory of God is released through prophetic acts. That's one of the things that we need to do. Sometimes we need to act. Go ahead. You can sit down again. Amen. Say, I have authority and dominion in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything is under his feet. That means it's under my feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. By grace I have been saved through faith. Amen. I am his handiwork. I am his masterpiece created in Christ unto good works. Amen. We are brought near to him by the blood of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ has made the two groups the saved and the unsaved. He's bringing us all together. Amen. So that all are welcome at the foot of the cross. Amen. Say, Christ is my peace. Amen. Hallelujah. I am part of a new humanity and I have the DNA of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, you need to confess that. Say, I've got the DNA of Jesus Christ. Some of you believe that and some of you don't. Say, I have the DNA of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about a spiritual encounter with God. Oh, man, I feel the glory. I'm getting happy. Come on, hallelujah. I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. And what does the kingdom mean? It means the king's domain. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God, and I have access to God, access to the riches in Christ, access to the power, access to the healing and deliverance. Say, I've got access. Amen. I am joined together as one, creating a holy temple, the dwelling place of God, in whom he has built it together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
That was the three-minute version of what we studied the last few weeks on Thursday nights. Man, I'm telling you, we've had some good times, haven't we? Amen. Woo, man. Today we're going to go into Ephesians, the third chapter. And I'm going to talk to you about a revelation of revelations. A revelation of the great mystery, which is the church of Jesus Christ. You have to understand when Paul wrote this, behind bars, blood running down his back, rats in the, in, in, in the prison, licking his wounds. Think about it, guys. Come on, that's the truth now. Hallelujah. I had a video I wanted to show you today which would explain this, but we'll show it next week. That's okay. We'll be good. Hallelujah. He was in prison and he got revelation. He got revelation of something that nobody understood before. Right. The great mysterion, the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Nobody understood it. The Jews didn't understand it. The great Hebrew prophets didn't understand it. That's right. It's the glory of Christ in me. Say, Christ in me. The hope of glory. Amen. Say, I've got Jesus Christ inside of me. Some of you believe that. Come on, say, I've got Jesus Christ inside of me. Come on, let me turn this up. I've got Jesus Christ inside of me. do with the devil's under my feet. Say it's under my feet. Amen. We talk like the devil's some big deal. We got a little devil and a great big God. Let's go a little further. Say we got a little bitty devil. Say we got a little bitty devil and a great big God. I'm going to read the first few verses of Ephesians 3. Are you ready? Somebody said I'm ready. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. This is the dispensation of the grace of God. Let me say it again. This is the dispensation of the church age. Amen. We are now in the church age. We see it differently because the organized church has existed for the last 1,500 years. The Apostle Paul saw it differently then because he didn't even understand what the organized church was all about. He just understood that the presence of God makes a difference, amen, and makes a change in people in cities. And then he was getting revelation as to what this was. How that by revelation he made known unto me this mystery, as I have wrote before in few words, whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in this great mystery of Christ. Amen. Which in other ages were not made known, not even the great Hebrew prophets understood this, unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Holy Spirit. Everybody said, by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. A key event in Scripture will help us understand this great mystery a little bit better. When Jesus was baptized in water, the heavens opened. Would you agree? Yes. And something very significant happened. Those in the Jordan River that day experienced three significant manifestations. They heard Father God say... This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. They saw the son of God, the Messiah, the anointed one in the water, humbling himself under the mighty hand of the father. They saw the Holy Spirit descend and land on Christ like a dove, which was very significant. This was one of the most visible manifestations of the Trinity as we know it today. Amen. Amen. We often pray a prayer which is a very good prayer. That God will open the windows of heaven. Open the heavens in our lives. In our homes. In our families. How many have ever prayed that prayer? Many times we pray 
The Isaiah 64 prayer that God will rend the heavens because we are so hungry and desperate for more of his presence. It's an important prayer because many times we are praying that God will open the heavens over cities and over nations. Amen. Somebody said amen. That's, that's crucial right there. But sometimes we live in ignorance of what we already possess. Listen to your pastor. This is revelation. We need revelation. I'm not going to give you information this morning. I'm going to give you revelation. Amen. Sometimes we live in ignorance of what we already possess. When you pray for what you already have, you never have the joy of seeing that prayer answered because he can't answer a prayer that contradicts what he already said. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What actually happens is that we pray in a way that wars against what he has promised. Amen. And it's not okay to do that. Say it's not okay. When he said, I will never leave nor forsake you, it is an error to pray, Lord, please don't leave me. Now you're going to get revelation this morning. You're going to leave this sanctuary different than when you come in. I guarantee you will be different. You will be different than when you come in. These thoughts and subsequent prayers in our soul empower the enemy to do what you believe. Amen. So if you don't believe something correctly, it empowers the devil to have power. Amen. In your life. And that's not good. Amen. Hallelujah. The words that come out of my mouth must never, as somebody said, never contradict what God has already said. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And especially words that we put into the category of prayer. We must get revelation. Or we will continue to pray for what we already have. For we already have open heavens over us. You've heard me say this since we were in the prayer circle up here. I said there's an open heaven over this church family. Over not just this building but over this family. Amen. Hallelujah. We already have open heavens over us. We already have an open heaven over our house. Come on, you need to confess it. Somebody said, yes, I do. We already have an open heaven over my family, over my children, and over my grandchildren. Amen. Hallelujah. There is an open heaven over my family. At Jesus' baptism, the Spirit of God was released. And the glory came down. Amen. Because of what Jesus did for us, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Remember that old hymn from years ago. Sadly, what I often find in most Christians perceive that heavens are closed over them. And they think that especially when an answer to prayer does not come quickly. Or in their prescribed timing. However, closed heavens are only between your ears. They're only in your mind. Say closed heavens heavens are between my ears. ears. (laughs) They're not real. They're just between your ears. They're in your mind. Preach it. I love to hear that. Thank you, Kathleen. What happened at Jesus' baptism? God tore the heavens open and the Spirit came down. Amen. What does Isaiah 64, 1 say? Oh, that thou would rend the heavens, that thou would come down, and the mountains might flow down at thy presence. Amen. Hallelujah. In reality, as a child of God, saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, you live under an open heaven. All the time. We walk not by sight and feeling. We walk by faith in what God's word says. His word is where the power lies. Amen. The word actually says that the father is jealous for the Holy Spirit dwelling in me. Amen. Hallelujah. He is jealous. Amen. He is. He wants you for himself. That's how much he really loves us and wants to be ever near us, in us and on us. With spiritual maturity, we get some of this revelation of the great mystery as we understand the value God places on your joy. Somebody said joy. Joy. He has reserved his greatest reward for us, and that is joy. 
Say joy. Say nobody going to steal my joy. You need to confess that. That was weak. Come on. Say nobody's going to steal my joy. Boy, I feel something stirring here this morning. I'm starting to get happy. He has reserved his greatest reward for us, and that is joy. Jesus endured the cross, despised the shame for the joy that was set before him. Amen. Joy was the reward that Jesus got for suffering. Amen. One of the early revelations we get when we seek his face in the great mystery is the spirit of joy, which is our source of strength. If the devil can steal your joy, he's got your strength. And he will whip you every time if he can steal your joy. Come on. Come on. I, I, I should hear something stirring right here. Say, I don't want anybody to steal my joy. Hallelujah. In all of this, we are now starting to get revelation of the great mystery. The church of Jesus Christ. How much God loves the church. And how much he personally loves you. Ephesians 3, 2 to 4, we'll read it again. If ye have heard of the dispensation of this grace of God, which is the church age, this is given me to you, word. Amen. How that by revelation he made known unto me this mystery, as I wrote before, only in a few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge now of this great mystery. The apostle Paul called it the great mysterion. He knew that nobody else, not even the Jews in Jerusalem, not even the early church members understood this yet because they thought the Jews had a corner on Christ. Amen. They thought they and they were upset about the Greeks getting involved. Amen. The Gentiles were invited into the family. Come on. Here is prophetic revelation. There is nothing, say nothing, no demonic power or force that can separate me from the love of God. Hallelujah. Say nothing, say nothing, nothing, nothing can separate me from the love of God. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor debt, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I just read Romans 8. 38 and 39. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody should praise God right there. Therefore you live under an open heaven. Say this is the glory. As we part of the great agency of the Holy Spirit, we call it the church, continue to honor him in obedience. This is important. The experience of his glory ever increases to a point where we can walk into a room and the atmosphere changes. What did I just say? The atmosphere changes. When you walk into the Wawa, the atmosphere changes. Come on. Come on. Guys, are you getting this? Yes. That's why I say the glory is here because you're here. Right. The glory is here because you're here. Say, I'm a carrier of the glory of God. Some of you believe that. And I'm praying that we all will believe that. Amen. Amen. So I'm persuaded. So I'm persuaded. There's nothing can separate me from the love of God. If I was burning, let let me go to an extreme example. If I was burning in hell right now, the love of God on me would be the same. You understand that? Even if I was lost, he loves me just the same. Don't even try to comprehend the love of God with the human mind. You will, in a finite setting, you will never understand the infinite love of God. Say, it's got to be by revelation. Say, it's got to be by revelation. Ephesians 3, 6 says that the Gentiles, even the unsaved and those who do not know Christ, would be fellow heirs. Say, fellow heirs. This is what upset the Jews so much in the early church. Because they said, why would these Gentile dogs have part in this? Should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. And that's the sixth 
verse of Ephesians 3. It's crucial to understand that the Spirit of God lives in every believer, but He does not rest on every believer. Did you know that? Amen. He lives in me for me, but He rests on me for you. Say, He's in me for me, but He's on me for you. Pastor, what are you talking about? Let me explain. Amen. It's crucial to understand that the Spirit of God lives in every believer, but He does not rest on every believer. He lives in me for me, but He rests on me for you. The Word of God says when Jesus was baptized, He come up out of the water and the Spirit of God rested on Him as a dove. The Scripture also says that the dove remained on Him. All Gospel accounts confirm that. That the dove did not move when Jesus got up out of the water and walked away. The dove remained on him. A significant revelation. It did not move. Gospel, gospel, multiple gospel accounts confirm this. This is a very significant statement. The dove is a very touchy, scary type animal. It always flies away very easily. The goal as a believer is to host the presence of God. Say, host the presence of God so that His presence will go with us everywhere we go. Say, everywhere we go. And remain on me. Say, remain on me. We are carriers of the glory of God. And everywhere we go, we'll be impacted by His presence. This is the manifestation of the great mystery church, the church of Jesus Christ. Christ in us, the hope of glory. The Holy Spirit resting on us as well as in us. Amen. Did you ever know anybody that's saved, maybe even filled with the Holy Spirit, but has a bad attitude? Did you ever know somebody that was saved, even filled with the Holy Spirit, that still steals? No, this is the truth, and you know I'm telling you the truth. That's what I mean. The Holy Spirit is in me for me, but He doesn't rest on me unless the glory of God is flowing in and through me. Amen. And it's got to be proven by our life and living. That's called maturity. Say maturity. Maturity. What you become aware of this, you become positioned in Him to release this glory on all levels of society. Say all levels. With the poor, with the rich, in the business world, on your job, in the church, while you drive and travel, while you shop, you get the idea at all levels of society the glory of God should be released amen not just on Sunday morning in a church service come on anybody can feel the glory of God in an atmosphere like this it's when you walk through those doors and you have somebody cut you off when you drive out of this place it's when somebody steals some money from you (laughs) glory of God say I want the Holy Spirit in me and on me double for your trouble that sounds like Isaiah 61 7 amen Amen. The ministry of the gospel. Listen now to this revelation. The ministry of the gospel, that is the great mystery, is not about a release of words. You can hire a preacher to do what I'm doing. You can hire a preacher. There's lots of good speakers out there. And they'll come in and preach and maybe entertain you. The great mystery is not about a release of words. It is a ministry of releasing the presence of God in the earth. It is a ministry of releasing His glory. It is a ministry of releasing His power. The true manifestation of His glory. This is the revelation of the great mystery of the church. Amen. When there is a release of His presence, a release of His glory, a release of His power. Amen. 
I knew someone, and I, I've told many this, and most of you don't know who I'm talking about, so I won't use his name, but it was a person that when you were in his presence, you felt like you were in the presence of Jesus Christ. Wow. And it was that way consistently. It never changed. Even when he was being persecuted. Even when he was being hated. Even when he was facing very, very difficult times. And he did. He found his wife in bed with another man one time. Amen. Come on. Oh yeah. Even when the most difficult times of life. This man remained like Jesus Christ. One of the biggest challenges that we have. We call ourselves Christians. What does Christian mean? It means like Jesus Christ. Right. Ephesians 3, 7 says, Whereof I am made a minister according to the gift of the grace given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Say his power unto me, who am less than the least of all saints in this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles both to the saved and unsaved alike the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to make, this is the ninth verse, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery and to see just how magnificent the church really is. Amen. From the beginning of the world hath been hidden God who created all things by Jesus Christ. No one understood the church up until this revelation. Amen. Now let's look at some examples. Are you ready? Somebody said, I'm ready. Example one, Jesus walking down the road and a woman that was very sick for a very long time comes up and touches his clothing. And he says, who touched me in this huge crowd of people? He was cognizant of virtue going out of him. What is it like to live in that level of spiritual consciousness that we know when someone makes a spiritual demand on what is inside of us? Did you feel the glory of God being demanded on you this morning? You should have, because there's many in this congregation even right now that needs encouragement, that needs healing. Amen. This is not just something we do because it's the thing to do. No, the true ministry of the gospel is a release. Listen, a release of the glory of God. It's a release of the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the true ministry, not just words. Amen. Hallelujah. If the Holy Spirit that communicates directly with the Holy Father and connects with us to impart his awesome power. Now, now, now this is important to understand. Did you know that, that Jesus was imparted with the Holy Spirit without measure? Say without measure. That's why I've said he has operated in the spirit of tabernacles, the glory of God, the sevenfold spirit of God, which is a higher level of anointing than Pentecostal anointing. Amen. I won't get into that now, but I do believe with all my heart that the church has been anointed with what Pentecostal anointing amen we see things in part amen we see things in part but that which is perfect is come then that which is in part will be done away amen and someday we will walk in the fullness of the sevenfold spirit of God and that will be on the church that will be on the church prior to the rapture amen that's not just reserved for the millennium guys amen many think that's only reserved for the millennium I believe that will be on the church prior to the rapture. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus had the Holy Ghost on him without measure. Say without measure. We have the Holy Spirit on us with measure. Amen. But that which is when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Amen. Someday we will walk in fullness and it should be your drive. It should be your purpose that you walk in fullness. Amen. Say fullness. I want to be complete in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll never be satisfied until I walk in fullness. Amen. Hallelujah. Say fullness. The sevenfold spirit of God, which is mentioned many, many times in the Bible. Hallelujah. But it's never taught. We don't understand it. But we will be taught that here. And you will, I believe with all of my heart, I believe everyone in this church will be releasing the glory of God in every ministry that you reach out to engage in. Amen. Say the ministry of the glory of God. Hallelujah. 
What is it like it to have that level of consciousness that we know when someone makes us spiritual demand on what is in us? You talk about the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Spirit of God was given to Jesus without measure. And he said that we would have everything and do everything he did and even and even who's going to finish that and even more we're talking about the great mystery here guys this morning we're talking about the revelation in Ephesians the third chapter Romans 8 11 says the same spirit everybody say the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me say dwells in me And shall make alive my mortal body. This same spirit lives and dwells in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Oh my. Oh my. This is taking me down right now. Glory to God. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. That spirit dwells in me. Say, come on. Say it dwells in me. Point to yourself. Say it dwells in me. Not a similar spirit, not a facsimile. I'm talking about the same spirit that went down into that tomb, that dead, cold grave, and made alive the body of Christ. And he walked out with a glorified body. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're going to be celebrating that soon in Passover. It's coming up soon. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. That's the spirit that dwells in me. Oh, my. You know, if we can get even one little bit of this, it'll change it today. Jesus only did what he saw the Father do. Amen. He only says what he hears the Father say. This is so significant and why we must die to the flesh and be made alive unto God through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's the goal of this church is to do only what we see the Father do and only say what I hear the Father say. Now, that may not align with everything in your fancy. Do you hear what I'm saying? I said when we first started this church, I may not always say what you want me to say. But my goal is to be moving in the power of the Spirit. And we all need to humble ourselves under what the Spirit of God is moving. And if we're all filled with the same Spirit, we all should be hearing the same thing. Amen? Example two, Peter and John saw a lame man begging outside the temple who had sat there for a lot of years. Peter looks at him and says, we don't have any money, but what we have, we will give you. Rise up and walk in the name of the Lord Jesus. Peter knew what he had to give. Do you know what you have to give? Are you confident of what you have to give inside of you? Peter knew what he had to give. This is so significant that we know what we have been given. If we don't, we write small checks. Not talking about money now, but we write small checks in ministry because we are not aware of what is on deposit to our account. Amen. Hallelujah. What has God placed in the deposit of your heart? What has God placed in your account in the heavenlies? Amen. Say, I am seated in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The kingdom power, say the kingdom power, released through words, through touch, through prophecy, and through prophetic acts. Amen. That's why I say sometimes you got to stand up. You need a prophetic act. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just need to do that. Sometimes you just need to shout. Sometimes you need to be quiet, too. I mean, either way, let the glory of God move on you. But I'm saying sometimes it's right to shout. (laughs) Glory to God. Let her rip. Come on. Amen. My heart aches for all of us to become aware of what we already possess. Jesus said that the kingdom, which is the king's domain, is within you. Remember, Jesus said the kingdom is inside of you. Say, the kingdom is in me. me. Remember, Jesus only did what he saw the Father do. He limited himself so that he would have to draw from the Father constantly. Did you hear what the pastor just said? Jesus limited himself to only do what he saw the Father do. 
He limited even what he said. He only spoke what he heard the Father say. That's why we got to lay down our flesh and be subject to the Spirit of God. When his words become spirit. Now this is, this is truth now. This is probably one of the most powerful truths you're ever going to hear. And this is so crucial. One of his key goals was to model. This was Jesus' key goal. To model what it looked like to be a man totally connected and totally dependent upon the Father. He was modeling this profile for us. Because he was a man with blood and bones and nervous systems and organs in his body no different than you. But yet he was totally submitted and connected with the Holy Spirit. And everything he did was at the control of the Holy Spirit. And look what he did. It says in the book of John that if everything would have been recorded what Jesus, it couldn't have been recorded. There wouldn't have been space to write it all. The Bible captures a very small percentage of what Christ did. He did much, much more. Amen. And he was modeling what it was like to be a human being totally submitted to the Father. Imagine what he did in three and a half years. One man. Imagine of all of us in this congregation here this morning were operating at that level. Think about it. The power and the glory of the church. That's why he said, all the things that I did and do, you will do, but even to a greater degree. Amen. Somebody said amen. Amen. When we speak in his words become spirit. Now this is important. Jesus opened his mouth and because of his humble submission to the spirit of God, his words became spirit. He said, my words to you are spirit And they are life. That's in John the 6th chapter. Word is made flesh. Word is made spirit. The kingdom of God is not meat nor drink. But it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And when his words became spirit. The glory of God was released over humanity. When we say what the Father is saying, we release His glory and His presence. Amen. The person of the Holy Spirit, the realm of the kingdom, is in the realm of the Holy Spirit. When He opened His mouth, His words became spirit and changed the options of every hearer within the sound of His voice. Everything He said changed the atmosphere. When we speak his words, those words become spirit. And we alter the options of all the hearers that hear what we say. That's why when you feel the presence of God, there's something happening in the presence, even the proximity of our sanctuary here, where words have become spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Who's getting this? This is important. All right? That's why we must only speak what we hear the Father say, and we only do what we see the Father do. Example three, the crowd soon learned about this presence and would bring the sick and just lay them down along the side of the road so that the shadow of Peter would cover them and they would be healed. Amen. Amen. It is the proximity to our person, which is the dwelling place of God. A shadow has no substance, guys. Amen. It was the proximity to Peter and his person. Amen. Which is what? The dwelling place of God. Say, my body, my my mind. Come on, stand up a second. Come on, stretch out. Stand up a second. Say, my mind and my body is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. God lives inside me. Anybody that gets within a reasonable proximity of you is going to feel that presence. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I say when you walk into the Wawa, that store becomes sanctified because of your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
We're talking about a revelation of the great mystery this morning. The Apostle Paul had revelation of this great mystery. The great mysterion, he called it. Which was Christ in us. The hope of glory. The glory of God inside a human being. Some of you believe this, what I'm preaching this morning. I believe most of you do. A few may be struggling with this because you don't feel that way. Right. But we don't walk by how we feel or what we see, but we are governed by what God has said. Come on, somebody praise him. Hallelujah. Oh my. Your shadow will always release what overshadows you. Praise God. If the glory of God is on you, even your shadow. You see a shadow here? Yeah. Shouldn't be able to see a shadow. Yes. There's no substance in the shadow. We know the things in the Old Testament were, were types and shadows right. of the substance. They were types and shadows of the substance. Peter's shadow wasn't healing people. It was the proximity to his person. Amen. The glory of God was not just resting in him. It was on him. And the glory of God was in his body. Literally, do you believe the glory of God is in your body? Yes. That's why I have you go hug each other in during the service. Because the glory... Guys, the glory that's on you is going to get on somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Get on some of the glory. Come on, ask me what it's like to live with a prophet. Come on, guys. You may be seated again. Hallelujah. Hey, are we having some fun this morning? Hallelujah. Example four, a depressed Christian will never heal anybody. Did you know that? As depression turns us inward, say inward, and makes us focus on ourself. We become like the Dead Sea, flowing in and nothing flowing out. No life, wrapped up in fear and anxiety. We become self-absorbed. We become narcissistic. We may even criticize ourselves and focus on how bad we are. I've heard people do that. They beat themselves up and throw themselves under the bus. Amen? And then we think that's humility. That's not humility at all. That's just another form of pride. Did you hear what I said? This is revelation this morning. Say, this is revelation. When we're down on ourselves, that's another form of pride. We think it's humility, but it's still self focus It is still pride, and it's false humility. False humility will never take us into our destiny. Only genuine humility in Christ will do that. The anointing on us in alignment with the calling and the assignment that God has given us. I believe with all my heart, whatever God has called you to be, the anointing is on you to do that. Amen. Like I feel very called to reach out to the seniors. We're going to be doing ministry in the nursing homes on Tuesday morning again. And we're going to give everyone an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ. We may have 20 residents. We may have 30 residents. We may only have 10. It doesn't matter. I get just as excited in what I release if I've got five people sitting there or 50. It doesn't matter. The same glory, the same glory. Al's been going with me. Amen. Well, they're in heaven. They're a step ahead of us. Amen. Hey, if you guys want to be used of God, there is an endless opportunity among seniors. Yes, yes. And these people die all the time. Guys, we lost three at Summit Place just in the last two weeks of December. 
the prison last Sunday night. We were at Southwood's prison in Bridgeton last Sunday night. Huge. The, the room was full to overflowing. The glory of God was on those inmates. They were like horses coming out of the gate at me. I mean, we, we, we worshiped God and we preached our heart out for about 40 minutes on Sunday night. And they gave them all the opportunity to receive Christ and get all filled with the Holy Spirit. Many of them were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Many of them were. It was a glorious time last Sunday night. Are you interested in allowing the glory of God to be released from you? Rich does all these things all the time. Rich is reaching out to truckers. He's reaching out to motorcycle guys and guys that jump out of airplanes and whatever else Rich does, he does it all. Amen. He does it all. I mean, he's reaching out to all the unusual people. You know, come, come on, guys. You know, we are called of God, and I believe the anointing is on you to match whatever it is that God has called you to be. And if you're sitting here this morning feeling unsatisfied in what's going on in your life, you need to get on your face before God and say, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing that I'm not doing right now? And it's not about doing, but it is about releasing the glory of God. Amen. It's about, re it's about living in Christ and then releasing that glory. It's about living in Christ and, re and releasing that glory. Amen. Somebody said amen. amen. The anointing is on us and is in alignment with the calling and the assignment that God has given us. Who believes that? Amen. amen. That is why we must be aware of our calling and stay in the lane he has ordained for us to be. Remember when Kelly Masters with us a couple of months ago, she looked at me, she said, Pastor Steve, one thing I admire about you, you stayed in the lane that God has called you to travel. We never got out of that lane. God asked us to do this. Asked us to, pa to, to pastor a local church in New Jersey. <laughs> Not the easiest place to start a church. You guys understand that? This is not Atlanta. No. This is not Oklahoma City. No. This is not the Midwest. This is not the butthole of the Bible. No. We're in New Jersey here. And he said, pastor a local church and then reach out from there in a kingdom mode. I believe that we're doing almost everything that God has told us to do. We may be missing a few things, but we're going to add a few things this year. But it's not about doing. It's about releasing. Amen. It's about releasing. It's not a ministry of words. It's, it's about releasing the love of God. It's about releasing the glory of God. It's about releasing, can you say amen, about the power of God being released in the people's lives. Amen. That's what ministry is all about. Somebody said amen. Somebody said amen. The presence of God is on us and its substance. Amen. It is the manifestation of his glory and it accomplishes what we believe. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and it is the evidence of things not yet seen. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to read a few more verses in Ephesians, the third chapter. This morning, God has used us to release this great message on understanding and getting a revelation on the great mystery, which is the church of Jesus Christ. Now listen carefully. Ephesians 3, 10 to 12, to the intent that now the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. Amen. Say there is nothing even in demonic in, in demonic domain, even that is under the church. Do you understand that? Say it's under the church. According to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access. Say access. I have access into the throne room of God because when Jesus said it is finished, the veil of the temple was torn in two. Amen. Symbolizing access to the glory of God. Access to God the Father. Access to Jesus himself. Access into the power of God. You hear what I'm saying? Say, I have access. 
wherein I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse number 15, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Amen. Say, we are all named after Christ. We bear his name. And that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened. Say, I'm strengthened with might by the Holy Spirit in the inner man. Why? Because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. And it's also healing your mortal body this morning, by the way. Oh, God only cares about the spiritual things. Where did you read that? He cares about everything in your life. He cares about your body. He cares about those headaches that you have. He cares about that back pain that you have. He cares about your kidneys not working right. He cares about the money shortage that you've got. He knows and understands everything about your life and cares about it. Where did you read that God is just wants us to be all spiritual? Well, we're not all spiritual yet. We have a body, we have a soul, and a mind, and a spirit. We have all three. And he cares about everything that is involved in all of that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good insurance. I like that. He the man. He said that's good insurance. Come on, everybody said Arnie's the man. Arnie's the man. You're the man. That's what I say to Demetrius Rocco when I talk to him. I say, Demetrius, you the man. By the way, he's going to Kuwait this week. Keep Demetrius. I was going to mention that. And uh, so uh, please pray for Demetrius. He's going to Kuwait for nine months. Amen. Verse number 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye be rooted and grounded in. Somebody finish that. In love, the word, it's all good. Amen. It's all good. Say, root it and ground it in love. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ. I'm talking about a revelation. That's why when Jimmy played that song for us, when our, when our computer failed us today, and, and we had that great time of worship and, and that great, that incredible song, Oh My Graces, on how he loves us. Amen. Yeah. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge is greater than knowledge. It's not something you can learn. You can't understand it by picking up a book and reading about it. Amen. Which passes knowledge that he might be filled with all the fullness of God. Say, I have all of God inside of me. Somebody said, I have all of God. I don't have just some of it. I got it all. Ephesians 3.19 says, I am filled with all the fullness of God. Come on, somebody confess that. Say, I am filled with all the fullness of God. Not just some of it. And unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Ask is pray for, think is imagine, amen, according to the power that works in us. And unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah.